I recently started drawing in a completely different way and it has totally changed the way I think about pencil drawing. And all I've done is steal something from oil painting. A lot of times what oil painters will do is they'll take their canvas and they'll lay down a base layer of paint. Then they take a cloth or a piece of fabric and maybe some turpentine or whatever and they wipe off the paint and it really quickly sort of gives this almost like ghost-like image of their painting, whatever their subject is, right? And so I was like, how can I take that and apply that to drawing? Because they're able to get something that looks so cool in such a short amount of time, and then they just work it for a few more hours, and if they're uh, one of the sort of plain air painters or uh, impressionists, then they have a done painting in like no time. So I wanna take a few minutes and show you what I did to figure out how to do that in drawing. All right, so let me show you real quick. First of all, we have our star of the show, uh, Mr. Van Gogh Bear. He's been making a lot of appearances over on YouTube Shorts, and so I thought it'd be a lot of fun to just draw him today. So let's get started. All right, I've got a couple simple tools, and let me just go ahead and cover those real quick. First, we have graphite powder. If you don't have graphite powder, don't worry, I have a video on it. It's one of my first videos on this channel. And if you don't wanna worry about graphite powder at all, it's totally fine. You can just take a pencil and turn it on its side. And we're gonna basically just wanna cover a large area, just like painters do. We're gonna cover the entire sort of canvas, or in this case, a sheet of paper with graphite. And this is gonna give us a really nice base layer and foundation. The other thing I have right quick is a makeup sponge. And that's gonna help me apply my graphite powder. So just a second, I'll show you exactly how to do this without the graphite powder method. But I take my graphite powder and I'm gonna go ahead and lay down just sort of a base layer so I have something to start with, something to work with, all right? And then this way I can erase, I can go darker than this. I just have sort of middle tones, all those mid-tones already done really, really fast, okay? So there's, way to lay it down with a makeup sponge and graphite powder. Like I said, don't worry about it. If you don't, just take a pencil, turn it on its side. I like to use my darker pencil. This one's 8B. So if you don't have a dark pencil, that's okay. Just do this lightly so that you don't press too hard into the paper because our goal is gonna to be to erase a lot of what we're putting down right now. And I'm not even looking at my subject matter. I'm just getting a nice big area covered. All right. So the difference you can obviously see between the makeup sponge and the graphite powder versus the pencil is the pencil lines. So let's get rid of those. And the easiest way to get rid of the pencil lines is to use toilet paper. It's something that everybody should probably have somewhere around their house. You can just take the toilet paper, I'm winding it up, and I'm just going to do little circles and sort of back and forth spread all around. And what this is gonna do if I laid the pencil down light enough is it's gonna help me get rid of all those pencil marks. Okay, so there's a couple of them that I can see. I probably pushed a little too hard into the paper. I can kind of see a little bit, but overall, this is working just fine. All right, and then I have my base layer. Okay, so my dad always taught me that if you wanted to find the most efficient way to do something, find the laziest person in the room and ask them how they would do it. So this is kind of the lazy way of doing things because it's extremely efficient, right? Lazy people don't want to work a whole lot, right? So that's why it ends up being efficient. So the next thing I'm going to do now that I have this nice layer of graphite laid down, all my mid-tones are basically done already. I'm going to take a look at my bear and I've got my erasers. So I'm mostly going to be using two different kinds of erasers for this. I have the kneaded eraser over here on my left and then I have just your regular standard sort of rubber eraser over here on my right. The rubber eraser is gonna let me get those very bright highlights. The kneaded eraser is gonna let me get bigger areas and sort of different variants in some of these highlights. Um, also, it's not going to um, get quite as bright of highlights as the rubber eraser because you can press in and get a lot more of this graphite powder off of this sheet of paper. So here we go. Got my kneaded eraser, I'm putting down the rubber eraser for now, and I'm just gonna start looking at my bear, and I'm gonna just slowly wipe my eraser around. I'm just getting his head, it's just a big giant circle, right? And then more highlights from 
the way I'm looking at him are coming from the upper right. So I'm just gonna do a little bit more racing up there on the upper right. And then let's get some ears going in. So I'm just, again, just kind of blocking in the basic shapes. I'm not doing much. Just treating this like a big drawing device. And I've got some ears in there now, right? Now, it might not look like much, but it's starting to come together. I can start to see the shapes here. And I've got his nose, which is a little bit brighter. So let's go in here, get rid of some more of this graphite right in the middle here, just going in little circles. All right, now his nose is starting to appear. Cool. So the other great thing that's about this is I can see that I probably pushed everything a little bit too far to the right right now. It's not quite centered. So if I look at his face, I need to move everything over to the left, but that's okay at this stage. Because I haven't put any hard pencil down yet, it's very, very easy to just keep going, move everything over to the left a little bit. And if I need to add some of that graphite powder back in over here on the right, I'm gonna take my makeup sponge this time and I just add it back in. And then boom, everything's moved over to the left and it took like no time at all. I'm gonna continue going along. We've got his shoulders here. I'm just kind of wiping away with this kneaded eraser. Got his arms, got his belly, right? And then I've got his little legs and his feet are starting to come out towards me a little bit. And this leg's going off over to my right and then the bottom of his foot. And you can start to see the shape of the bear is already appearing. And all I've done is take a couple of seconds to just erase a little bit of the highlights in there or a little bit of the graphite in there to get these highlights. So now I'm gonna take my rubber eraser and I'm gonna to start to define these shapes a little bit more. So now you can see how much easier that that's starting to cut through this graphite. So I can readjust. The ear doesn't need to be all the way over here since we shifted everything to the left. I can erase, start to get the shape in there better. And what this allows me to do is over time, I'm able to just keep making constant little micro corrections without having to actually go in and really try and erase anything that feels kind of permanent, like a really harsh pencil line. So let's just keep going. Let's erase a little bit more up here. He has that bright nose we're gonna do right here. He's got his cute little beady eyes. Right there, right there, we got the little highlights. And you can see the bears starting to come together. some for his belly, his shoulder, his arm. And the entire time I'm able to just go, yeah, do I like the positioning of this yet? I haven't laid down a single pencil line yet. That's what's so cool about this. And I'm already getting the bear. And you know what? At any point in this stage now, I can see the bear. So when I go to lay down my pencil lines, and actually get some more detail in here, it's gonna be a lot easier because now I feel like I have a starting point without, all right, where do I start first? Do I start with the eyes? Do I start with the nose? Where, where do I go? Now, if I wanna add a little bit more detail before I ever pick up that pencil, I can do the same thing, just a little bit more detail with this blending stump. And I have my graphite powder, I can dip it in. And so that way, if I wanna go a little bit darker with his nose and come in here with this, and I'm drawing his nose, mouth, smile. Still haven't put a pencil down yet. And when I do go to put the pencil down, everything's gonna be so much easier because now I have an idea of exactly where everything is. Let's add really quickly his little bow tie. Just gain a general idea with these shadow shapes in here. Okay. And then what I can do now is within those shadow shapes, I can come back, take something like my harder rubber eraser, and I can add some more of those highlights back in. There's a little one there, a little one here, here, here. Now I'm starting to get the shape of his bow tie. Again, very quickly with very, very little minimal work. And what this is going to do is instantly improve my drawing because now the shading is done. And what I did, all I did effectively is go in reverse. I started shading first and now I'm going to go in with the pencil 
versus starting with a pencil first and then going with the shading later. So we got a little bit more shadow that I need to add over here on the left side to give them some sort of roundedness, right? Since that light is coming from the upper right, this little mouth area, a little bit darker. Look, he just keeps coming to life more and more. And then you get to find your drawing. It's an experience instead of just starting with an outline or something like that. The drawing sort of comes to life as you're doing this. It's really, really fun. A lot, of, a lot that you can explore and create this way. I think this will really work so well, not just with something that's a still life like this, but it works for portraits, it works for landscapes, because all you're doing is applying the same techniques that oil painters and uh, acrylic painters like I just have been using for years and years and years. And now that I've got the basic shading done, it's gonna make it a lot easier for me to go ahead and take my pencil and start actually drawing this guy out. So if I wanted to add a little bit harder lines, I already have an idea of exactly where that ear is supposed to be. So if I need to erase, it's not gonna be that big a deal because it's gonna be in generally the right spot. So now I've done shading first, drawing later, and that creates very cool finished looking image in about half the time as it probably would have taken me the other way, if not, not even faster than that. And there we go, I could keep going more and more. I can keep shading, come back, use that toilet paper trick to get rid of some of those pencil lines. And I've got my teddy bear. So I hope you learned a lot with this. Check out the art supplies video if you haven't seen the graphite powder or wanna know what other tools that I'm using, and I'll see you in the next one.